Okay, so we're here at DevOx, and I'm here with uh, Igor and uh, Mishko from uh, AngularJS. And AngularJS, for those who've never heard of it, is a new, can we call it a JavaScript framework? Does it, sure. are you offended? Th that's the closest. That's the closest, but you have a different take on things. You like the things that are declarative, right? Yes, I, I like to think of it as a, a what a browser would have been had it been designed for web applications. And uh, you don't like to deal with the DOM, or you think you know other frameworks maybe are abstracting away and, and, and hacking the web and the browsers, and you're trying to be more true to maybe HTML yes. and, and... Yes, a lot of uh, frameworks take the approach that you know DOM and HTML and CSS is complicated stuff, even sometimes the JavaScript. And so they try to hide it from the user. And so we're kind of unique in that we're saying, no, 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 we're just going to embrace it. And we're just going to see if we can monkey patch some of the deficiencies to make it better. So do you want to talk about data binding and templating and how that helps? So in Angular applications, we see that um, the biggest benefit you, you get from using Angular is this declarative templating. In Angular, you don't do imperative DOM manipulation uh, just anywhere in your application that like you're common in jQuery applications. In, in uh, Angular application, you have a model. This model is something domain specific to your application, and this model drives the view. And it drives it in a way that um, you, s you take this template and you declare to specify where this model binds to, to the template. And you let the templating engine figure out how to take the model and, and push it through this template and render the view and keep the model and the view in sync at in all sync, times. Right, so this is bidirectional. It's yeah, so it's bidirectional. If you have input fields, we actually uh, take the user input and we push it to the model back. Um, if, y if you have just, just single binding, we take uh, whatever changes happen to the model and update the view for you automatically. So um, something else uh, I understand about AngularJS is the dependency injection being built in, which is a term, obviously, it means a lot to, say, Java developers. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? Mm -hmm. And you know, what does it even make sense for Java and for the web? And is it about testability? So testability is one, one uh, uh, reason why we embrace dependency injection. But in general, we find that dependency injection just gives you these guidelines. So how should you structure your application into smaller components? And then have dependencies between components that are automatically resolved when, the, when uh, any of the components needs to be instantiated. So not only dependency injection helps you with testability, it helps you just making the application easier to understand and, and write and maintain. And maintain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You mentioned components. What was the component story in AngularJS? Do you build components, custom components? Yeah, so we can basically, we're trying to follow the web component story. Uh, so we want to turn. You want to say what web, web components oh, web are? Web components is uh, the new standard that's coming from the W3C, where uh, they're recognizing the need if you're building an application, you know, that the divs and spans is not what you want. Rather, you want reusable stuff like tabs and control panels and, and so on. You basically on. want high level abstractions. So you want to, to build abstractions from, from this small uh, LI span or whatever right. you have and just create component that will just say, oh, this is a tab or this is a Google map or you know any other component that you might have that, that is then internally structured from these low level uh, DOM elements. Right, and, and Angular, how does that tra translate? And so with yeah. Angular, we allow you to build these reusable components today. Uh, we use existing DOM APIs in JavaScript, which is not as powerful as you, what you could do with, with uh, changes to the native APIs. And uh, our story is, you know, let's start building these reusable components today and pretend that we already have this low-level uh, native, uh, native APIs for building components. And when the web component specification is done, uh, it's going to align really well because it will allow you to build the same kind of components, but with native APIs. Okay. So the, uh, the, uh, what I want to add to it is, you really what we're trying to do is we want to we want to turn HTML into a declarative DSL, like domain specific language, right? Where if you're building a application that has a lot of panes and panels and, and uh, text. Um, you know, a calendar thing, then you want to have a vocabulary that's useful for building that application. Okay. So uh, I have my components, I have my views, my, uh, how do I wire up a backend? How do you get the data from your friends, you know, producing and managing the data source? So we, we're trying to be a server-side agnostic, uh, so there's no server-side component. 
Uh, that means that as long as the server is producing uh, JSON and something that looks or XML or, or XML, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, if if there is a way how you can get data from the server to the client, then we can just use this. Uh, if this is done through HTTP, if it's done through WebSockets, if the the encoding is JSON or XML, we don't care. We provide you some helpers. So, like for HTTP and, and a RESTful backends, we give you some support to how you can communicate. But we really think that you know there are such a variety of backends out there that it doesn't really make sense for us to be tied to only one specific backend. Okay, you should be able to use anything. One thing that is really interesting for me is um, th there are new approaches of solving the, the backend. For example, Meteor.js completely says, you know, REST doesn't work for, for applications that are we're building today on the web. We need to rethink how we deliver data to, to the browser. And uh, integration between AngularJS and Meteor is something that we are heavily discussing right now. Okay. So uh, for a developer looking into um, trying out AngularJS, what does the tool chain look like? What are, what are the tools you recommend? Do you recommend any? I mean, this is the web, this is editing. Tool number um, one, browser. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, is the clarity You need stuff. a browser. That's you need a browser, right. Yeah. Do you need the uh, full-blown IDEs that, uh, you know? No, not really. Um, because most of the editors today have support for HTML. So they can do syntax highlighting, they can do all completion for HTML. And Angular is really just HTML extended. And JavaScript, of course. So if you have an editor that is suitable for web design and, and just simple web, web uh, development, then it's suitable for AngularJS development. There are some IDs that are better. Uh, for example, WebStorm currently has the best support for AngularJS, but there are other, other IDs well, that are working. support, just to be clear. So th this means auto-completion of, uh, of uh, Angular-specific attributes. attributes. Uh, it also means maybe just pre-generating uh, templates for you. So if you, if you have some component that has a well-known structure, it can just pre-generate the code for you. Um, what else am I missing? Testing, running tests uh, with Angular. So Angular is really, uh, we, we like, like to tell people that they really should test drive their applications. Mm -hmm. And ID can help there. So having a good uh, integration with, with uh, test runners uh, is important. Right. Uh, you have uh, integration with uh, Chrome DevTools as well for of course. debugging purposes. For, for debugging purposes, Chrome is amazing uh, because it helps us see what the application looks like at runtime. And the debugging tools in Chrome are already pretty good. Like you can debug JavaScript, you can you can debug the element, and you can look at the DOM and see what state it is in. But we thought that we could do better. So we actually created an extension for the web inspector that you see in, in Chrome. And with this extension, um, you can visualize what the application structure looks like, what is the current model state, uh, what are the what is the state of the dependency injector and all the dependencies in my system. Okay, very nice. So uh, I obviously have written some JavaScript already. I have pages. I'm using probably some frameworks. Does Angular play well with those frameworks, or do I need to rip everything off? And yeah. And yeah, that's something that I feel very strongly about. You know, I think one of the success of jQuery was that you didn't have to subscribe to the whole thing. You could just say, I'm going to start using jQuery on this little tiny portion of the page, and then I grow as I like it. And so we structured this uh, Angular in the same exact way, where you can just sprinkle as little of it or as much as of it you want. You can even use it with a round trip application, and then later on think about how you turn the round trip application into a single page Ajax application. Okay, and the dependencies, how big are they? I mean, are you, are you dragging along like big page, <laughs> uh, big, no. big so libraries? Or uh, Angular is uh, about the size of jQuery, a little smaller. No, because you're right about jQuery, K you can do that. It's, but it's much smaller. It's much smaller? Yeah, it's much smaller than so jQuery. It's 29K so Angular itself is 29K right now, um, when it's just exemplified. We, we have some plans to make it even smaller, but really 29K is not that big. It's, it's no, a it's small image. I uh, think so. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, I think we're doing quite well there. Like we try to keep the core of the framework small, and then if, if there are some functionality that we see that people use but not all the time, then that should be in a separate module that, that you can load if you want to. So and often th this uh, this uh, brings up the question of what about components? Like are there components that the framework um, brings uh, and, and contains? And the answer is no. We wanted to build the core of framework very small and we wanted to make it possible to build all these components on top of Angular. So one of the design philosophies on Angular is everything should be extensible. So when you look at all these custom attributes that Angular created, like ng-repeat, uh, ng-show, all of this stuff is built on 
um, the APIs that are available to all the developers. So if you actually don't like uh, all of our custom directives, you can just throw them away and build your own. Okay. And just use the, the HTML uh, templating core and the dependency injector. So where should people go to find out more about uh, AngularJS and AngularJS.org? .org, <laughs> org. That's, that's probably a good place. There's also the search engine called Google. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. Does it work? <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, guys, for being here and then <laughs> taking the time. Us. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you.